134 years. That's how long until we achieve gender equality at our current pace. You heard that right. If you're listening to this in 2024, your great-great-grandchildren might be the first to see true gender parity in the workplace. And here's the kicker. We're actually moving backwards in some areas. Ready to find out why? Hello, my brilliant pioneers of progress. Theodore here. And today we're diving into a future that's arriving faster than our society can keep up. We're exploring the collision of technological advancement and gender equality, or should I say inequality. We've got fascinating insights from the World Economic Forum's latest reports that might just make you rethink everything you thought you knew about progress. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive with us. Today we're going to be looking at the future of jobs, mm -hmm. but with a twist. Yeah. We're really focusing in on the gender gap. The gender addition. Yeah, the gender addition of the future of jobs. And we're going to be using a couple of really interesting reports as our jumping off point. Yes, we are. The first one being the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs Report 2023. Yep. And then also the Global Gender Gap Report 2024. Uh, and I think it's so interesting how both of these reports really highlight the connection between the future of work yeah. and, and the gender gap. Like, it's not just about robots and automation anymore. It's about understanding how acting men and women differently all around the world. Yeah. So I guess to kick things off, can you kind of set the scene for us? What does the global job landscape look like right now? OK, so picture this. We've got technology that's evolving faster than ever before. We've got the global political scene, which is, well, let's just say it's pretty volatile. A little shaky. And then there's this really urgent push for a green transition. Right. So moving away from fossil fuels and towards more sustainable practices. That's where we are right now. And all of this is creating this global labor market that's in constant flux. Totally a roller coaster. But here's the thing. It's not a roller coaster that everyone's experiencing in the same way. Okay. There's disparities emerging. So explain that. Okay, so we're looking at high increase entries. They're actually seeing really tight labor markets. Interesting. Like more job openings than people to fill them. Wow. But then you look at low and lower middle income countries and they're still dealing with really high unemployment rates. So we're seeing a divide even on a global yeah, absolutely. And it's important to see how those trends play out. OK, so let's zoom in even closer. What does this mean for the average worker out there who's just trying to make a living? You're thinking about your own career. Yeah. What we're seeing is that people with only basic education are having a harder time finding jobs. Oh, no. And significantly, women across the board are facing lower employment levels than men. One of the biggest drivers of this whole changing landscape that we're talking about is technology. Oh, yeah. Like, no surprise there, right? No. We're talking about AI, cloud computing, big data, all that. All the buzzwords. All the buzzwords. And the Future of Jobs report actually says that the adoption of these technologies, like, so what does that actually mean for us humans? Right. They're trying to, you know, have a job and, like, pay our bills and all that. It's a big question, right? Yeah. I mean, because on the one hand, you've got these headlines yeah. about robots stealing our jobs. And on the other hand, you've got all this excitement about the potential of these new technologies. Well, what's the reality? OK, so the reality is it's a little bit of both. OK. I mean, some jobs like those traditional clerical or secretarial roles, those are definitely declining. Uh -huh. But at the same time, a whole bunch of new roles are emerging in fields like Education, agriculture, okay, anything digital, so e-commerce, digital marketing, yeah, and of course, green technologies. That makes sense. Yeah, so I think the key takeaway here is adaptability. And this is where upskilling comes in. Upskilling. Okay, so explain that. Yeah, so upskilling is all about investing and in developing those in-demand skills. Okay. And really making sure that you're you're ready to thrive in this ever-evolving job market. And you know what's crazy? The report actually found that even though AI is going to lead to all this churn right. in the job market, more companies actually predict that it's going to create jobs more to than destroy them. That's hopeful. Yeah. So it's kind of like instead of fearing the robot takeover, yeah. maybe we should be thinking about how to partner 
yeah. with AI and tech to create new opportunities. And that's a perfect segue into what we really want to talk about today, which is the gender gap. Yeah. Because even with all this talk about the future of work, we can't ignore the fact that women are still facing these huge disparities. When it comes to leadership pay and even just access to those exciting new opportunities we were just talking about, yeah. it was pretty sobering. LinkedIn data actually shows that women only hold like 31.7% of senior leadership positions globally. Oh, wow. Which is crazy. And even worse, the rate of women being hired into those top roles has actually declined. Declined. In recent years. Wow. It's like we're going backward. It's like we're moving in the wrong direction. Instead of forward. Yeah, it's wild. It is wild. And, you know, the Global Gender Gap Report really emphasizes that this isn't just an issue of fairness. Yeah. It's got serious economic consequences. A more equitable workforce leads to greater innovation. Right. Productivity. Yeah. The whole economy it benefits when we have more women in leadership roles and across all sectors. Yeah. So why is it taking so long to close this gap? I mean, the Global Gender Gap Report actually puts a timeline on it. Oh, no. And it's not pretty. 174 years at the current rate of progress to achieve global gender parity, 134 years. So I guess my question to you is, does that timeline light a fire under you uh, or does it just feel kind of discouraging? I think it's both. OK. I mean, it's a call to action for sure. Yeah. But it's also a reminder of how much work we still have to do. I think we need to understand the root causes of this persistent gap. Yeah. Let's dig into that. Let's do it. Think about this. In the time it's going to take us to reach gender equality, we could colonize Mars, cure most known diseases, and probably develop flying cars. Twice. It's wild that we can create artificial intelligence that passes the bar exam, but we can't figure out how to pay women fairly or put them in leadership positions at the same rate as men. Something seriously off with our priorities here, folks. If we want to actually make progress, right. we got to understand like what's really going on here. Absolutely. And both of these reports were looking at the future of jobs report and the global gender gap report. They offer some really interesting insights. OK, so give us the highlights. All right. So one thing that jumped out at me from the global gender gap report was the impact of online professional networks. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting one. Yeah. It sounds kind of simple, right? But the report suggests that men tend to have like larger and more robust networks than women do. Hmm like they've got a bigger pool of people to tap into. Exactly. And those networks often translate into more opportunities, better connections, and ultimately faster career advancement. It's like having a secret weapon in the job market. Kind of, yeah. It makes yeah. you think about all those like casual coffee chats and after work events that people are always talking about. Right. Are those actually playing a bigger role than we realize? I think so. Yeah. And then there's another factor that we can't forget about, and that's the impact of economic downturn. The report points out that those downturns can actually widen the gender gap because women are often hit harder by job losses and reduced hiring. So it's like a double whammy. It is. Yeah. yeah. And it creates this vicious cycle that can be really hard to break. It's like we're seeing how all these different threads, the future of work technology, the gender gap, they're all intertwined. What can we actually do to break these patterns and create a more equitable future of work? Yeah, that's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. Like, where do we even start? So we're talking about things like unequal access to childcare, parental leave policies that aren't really supportive, and even just those ingrained societal expectations that often place more caregiving responsibilities on women. It sounds like we need a pretty fundamental shift in how we think about work and family. Yeah, I think so. Okay, but what about the workplace itself? What can companies do to make things more equitable? Promoting more equitable hiring practices, creating workplace cultures that are truly inclusive and supportive of women, and really addressing those pay gaps that still persist in so many industries. So it's about creating an environment where everyone feels valued and has an equal shot at success. Okay, but let's be real for a second. There are still a lot of companies out there that talk a big game about diversity, mm -hmm. but don't actually walk the walk. I think it's accountability. OK. And one way to drive that accountability is through targeted investment. OK. I like where you're going with this. Yeah. So the Global Gender Gap Report actually calls for greater investment in reskilling and upskilling programs that are specifically designed for women. That makes a lot of sense, giving women the tools and knowledge they need to thrive in those fields that are booming, like tech, green energy, all those future-focused industries. OK, so that's a big one for companies they need to step up and invest in their female employees. Yeah, for sure. But what about individual women who are listening to this right now 
What advice would you give them for navigating this evolving landscape? I think my biggest piece of advice would be to embrace lifelong learning. Yeah, the world is changing so quickly, and the only way to stay relevant is to keep learning, keep growing, and keep adapting. Don't get stuck in a rut. Yeah, exactly. Keep those skills fresh. Keep those skills fresh. And don't be afraid to take risks, try new things, and step outside your comfort zone. Yes, all of that. And, you know, with all these changes happening, it can be tough to know where to focus your energy. Right. It's overwhelming. So my advice would be to think about the skills that are most in demand in the fields you're interested in. Okay. So do your research. Do your research exactly and look into online courses, workshops, certifications. Yeah, there's so many resources available now. There are so many. And a lot of them are free or really affordable. And don't forget about mentorship. Oh, yes. Mentorship is huge. Connect with people you admire, seek out guidance from experienced professionals, and build a network of support. That network is crucial. The Global Gender Gap Report really highlighted how important those professional connections are, especially for women. So attend industry events, join online communities, reach out to people you admire, basically put yourself out there and build those relationships. Yeah, and remember, networking is a two-way street. Be willing to offer your own expertise, support others, and build genuine connections. It's about building each other up, sharing knowledge, and creating a more collaborative environment. Absolutely. It's like being stuck in a game where half the players start with a full contact list and the other half start with an empty phone. Sure, everyone can technically make calls, but some folks are playing with a massive head start. And here's the thing. This isn't just about individual connections. It's about entire systems of opportunity that have been built up over decades. Breaking into that system, that's the real challenge we need to tackle. Okay, but let's not forget about the elephant in the room technology. We talked earlier about how tech is driving so much of this change in the job market. Right. So how can women make sure they're not being left behind in this tech revolution. Well, it's all about embracing technology as a tool for empowerment. Okay. Don't be intimidated by it. Yeah, I think that's a big hurdle for a lot of people. It can be, but there are tons of online learning platforms that offer training in areas like data analysis, coding, digital marketing, all those in-demand tech skills. So explore those options. Find something that sparks your interest and dive in. Any tips for making that process less intimidating? Start small. Don't try to learn everything at once. Okay. Find a course or tutorial that breaks things down into manageable chunks and focus on building a solid foundation. One step at a time. One step at a time. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, there's no shame in that. None at all. There are tons of online communities and forums where you can connect with other learners, get support, and troubleshoot any challenges you're facing. The future of work might feel uncertain, mm -hmm. but we're all in this together. We can create a future that's not just innovative, but also equitable and fulfilling for everyone. Absolutely. And as we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I want to challenge you to think about this. What actions can you take in your own life and career to contribute to a more equitable future of work? Ooh, good question. We've covered a lot of ground so far, like global trends, the tech revolution, those pesky systemic issues. Mm -hmm and some strategies for creating change. Lots of good stuff. Yeah, so now it's time to bring it all home. Like, yeah. how can we connect all of these insights to your own journey? Right, make it personal. Yeah, exactly, and empower you to actually take action. So one of the biggest takeaways, I think, from both the Future of Jobs report and the Global Gender Gap report yeah. is this idea of embracing lifelong learning. We've touched on this throughout the episode. We have. But it's worth repeating, like, it's not about what you learned in school anymore. Nope. It's about continuously updating your skills and your knowledge to keep pace with this crazy world that just keeps changing. Yes, the world is not slowing down. It's not slowing down. So you got to keep up. You got to keep up and think of it as an investment in your future. And don't be afraid to step outside that comfort zone. Yeah, get a little uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable. Explore new fields, take some online courses, attend workshops even if they seem a bit intimidating at first. You never know what you might discover. Yeah, yeah, and cultivating that growth mindset, right? Yes, growth mindset all the way. Like recognizing that learning, it's not something that ends when you graduate or get your first job. It's a lifelong journey. Like we can't ignore the fact that AI automation, all those tech innovations, they're gonna to continue to shape the future of work. They are, so we gotta be ready. Yeah. yeah, so it's essential to like be aware of those trends and figure out 
how you can use technology to your advantage. Yeah, don't let technology intimidate you. Embrace it. See it as a tool. As a tool for growth and opportunity. And there are so many online learning platforms now. Oh my gosh, so many. That offer training in like data analysis, coding, digital marketing. Yeah, anything you can think of. So explore those options. Find something that sparks your interest and just dive in. Just go for it. You might surprise yourself. Support women in leadership roles. Action is key. The future of work is in our hands. Let's shape it wisely together. I love that. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive. It's been a pleasure. We hope it sparked some new ideas, inspired you to take action, and empowered you to create a brighter future for yourself and for all of us. Yes to all of that. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep pushing for a more equitable world. We'll be back with more deep dives soon. Well, my forward-thinking friends, we've uncovered some pretty sobering truths today about the state of gender equality in our rapidly evolving workplace. 134 years is far too long to wait for change, especially when we're seeing progress actually reverse in some areas. But here's the thing. The future isn't written in stone. Every one of us has the power to challenge these patterns, push for change, and create ripples that could turn into waves. So keep questioning keep pushing boundaries, and most importantly, keep taking action. Until next time, this is Theodore, reminding you that the best time to change the future is right now.